And welcome back, rugby fans, to Rugby 411. As always, I'm your host. My name is Joshua Shibata, and this is part two of our 2024 Major League Rugby Preview of the Eastern Conference. Uh, make sure you check out part one for the Eastern Conference uh, video because uh, that's dealing with uh, some of the issues that we'll be talking about with this video on the top what I feel is might be the top three teams of the Eastern Conference. You're defending MLR champions, the New England Free Jacks, the Chicago Hounds, who definitely look like they have an upgrade this coming season, and then who I might feel is going to be in that third place spot, uh, Old Glory DC. Though, now looking over my notes now, maybe NOLA will give them a run for their money? We'll see. So with that being said, let's start talking about the NOLA Gold. Now, Nola Gold, they finished just shy of third place, uh, missing the playoffs 7-9 and four, seven and nine with 35 points. Uh, their head coach is Corey Brown once again. Uh, Nola did lose a few players. They lost Tom Florence, a very talented prop. Um, five tries scored. He's going back to New Zealand along with Jordan Trainer And then Dino Waldron uh, called a, a retirement to his career. 21 times capped as a USA Eagles. Uh, played for San Diego and then played uh, from 2020 to 2023 for NOLA. Um, very talented uh, fly half. So... Other than that, though, you know, not too many losses or changes for NOLA. They did add a couple of international players. Uh, Augusto Boeming, for, uh, who is a hooker, 25 tries, uh, a Chilean player, and then as well as a uh, prop from the Arrows, Isaac Salomon, a New Zealander who came over through the dispersal draft. Uh, Domingo Severda, who was supposed to be uh, joining the NOLA Gold, another talented Chilean player, 28 times cap, played for the Chilean team along with Augusto Bomi in the recent World Cup last year. Unfortunately, he's dealing with uh, visa issues, which we just found out a couple of days ago. So NOLA was able to pick up Tamiliela Filimoni, former New England Free Jack Tongan international player, who will take it in the spot until they figure out the uh, visa issues with Domingo Severda. Oh, but the big name that has been added to NOLA, which uh, in my opinion might actually make a di big difference, is Ed Fado from New York. Former New York Ironworker, uh, top try-scoring machine. 12 tries scored in 2022, with most tries scored, I believe, of that season. Um, the only issue with Ed is that last season... Going from 12 tries in 2022, he only scored four tries in 2023. Um, don't know if that had anything to do with him or just the way that the team played, the makeup of the team, but definitely a drop off. Maybe he'll bounce back this season with Nola Gold, um, but he definitely is a very talented player and a much needed offensive weapon. For Nola. Uh, other than that, Nola brings back a lot of other talented players from that from their squad. Rodney Iona, definitely the, in my opinion, the most talented one uh, and the heart of the team. Fly half, seventy-seven points scored. He was the most points scored for the Nola Gold. Uh, JP Duplessis, talented center, seven tries, most tries scored by a Nola player last year. Cam Dolan, the captain of the team, former Eagles captain, um, a great leader and a great figure in the rugby community lock for nola gold luke campbell scrum half uh four tries scored last season for him damian stevens a very talented namibian player uh 39 times capped international namibian player and then of course dougie fife scottish national fullback for the nola gold uh not much else to talk about nola not a lot of changes and that's kind of why i dropped um from the three into that fourth spot because really this looks almost like the same team from last season. Maybe an added extra with uh, Ed Fado. I don't know too much about Augusto Bome or um, Isaac Salmon, so I don't know how much they'll contribute to the team. But considering, again, how much improved Chicago looks, uh, New England is New England, uh, the one benefit that Nola had, and I mentioned this in the last video, and I'm going to talk about a lot with this video, with the preview of the other two teams that are in this video, is that the Eastern Conference does gain the benefit of having two teams debuting this season, the Miami Sharks and the Charlotte Anthem. Charlotte definitely is going to be an interesting team to watch and how they develop, but uh, it's been kind of proven with teams like the Dallas Jackals, with teams like the Chicago Hounds, uh, with the one exception being the LA Giltinis, uh, new teams coming into the league 
they struggle a lot. And again, it's as I mentioned this before in the in the first part video. I'll mention it again this part. Rugby is not your typical t uh, team sport like American sports with football and basketball where you have a lot of plays that you practice, that you make a lot of plays, that you have time for plays. Again, you do have set pieces, which we call in rugby, um, plays that come off of a stoppage in the play. So you have your scrums, you have your lineouts. Um, a lot of those are trained for preparation on the pitch and what the situation is. How do we prepare for it? What is the strategy here? Other than that though, it is just free flowing the whole entire time. There is no stoppage in play. That's the beauty of rugby. But unfortunately, unlike with football, where when you stop after every down, you can make a play. Rugby, you just go on pure instincts. We call it controlled chaos. And really, it's all about how well you connect with your teammates, knowing where they're going to be, and how you adapt to situations. You don't even know if you're going to be with the ball or playing defense because the other team has the ball. I mean, the, you know the plays go back and forth. Um, there is no stoppage if the ball turns over, unless there's a penalty. So it's there's not a lot of time to create plays or practice certain plays. So that cohesion of teams, of new teammates, is so crucial. And if you don't have that right from the start, and it's hard, because again, when we talk about Miami and Charlotte, this is going to be the first time that these, these teammates are playing with each other in a competitive setting against teams that have had years of experience playing with each other like NOLA, like Old Glory, like New England, and it's it's almost kind of unfair disadvantage. So NOLA gains the benefit, all the Eastern Conference teams gains the benefit of having to play, getting to play Miami and Charlotte twice in a season um, compared to the Western Conference. They only get to play them once. Um, not any disrespect to Miami and Charlotte, because again, LA, the Giltinis, won the championship in our very first year. Uh, so it's not like it's impossible. But you look at Dallas. Dallas was winless in their first season. Chicago started their first season three wins only. So it is a struggle. And um, I'll just be honest. I'm not going to expect too much from Miami and Charlotte, um, especially when you have teams like Chicago and New England in the same conference. Uh, so with that being said, and I hate being such a downer because I know I have Miami fans that are going to be watching this, and I'm really going to be hyped about Charlotte. And I'll explain why in just a bit of why you as a USA rugby fan should be hyped about them as well. Um, but it's going to be a struggle for those two teams in season one, I feel. Uh, let's talk about Miami. Boom. One of three new teams this season. Miami Sharks is the one team we knew about back last season as being the established new franchise. There's, they, I really do feel the Miami ownership has done it right with how they prepared on launching and really getting the Miami community behind the Miami Sharks. Um, they had a lot of press, a lot of events, a lot of galas. I think they had like a, a fashion show for their kit reveal. Um, they really know how to set a standard and showing off their team to fans that don't really know too much about rugby here in the United States. Uh, the Miami Sharks, they're going to be playing in the Auto Nation field, which is actually the training field at the DRV Pink Stadium. Uh, which is in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. DRV Pink Stadium holds 21,000 seats. The Auto Nation Field, the training pitch, only holds 5,000. Um, the DRV Pink Stadium is the home to the Inter Miami Football Club, uh, which is co-owned by one David Beckham. So a lot of fanfare knowing that you're playing in that same stadium. Granted, it is the smaller pitch, but still a lot of fanfare and hopefully a lot of cross traffic with soccer fans with rugby. Um, the coach is going to be Jose Pelicena, who is a former Argentinian under-20 manager. And, uh, you know, this team definitely has a very international flair to it. Nine South, Af South American players are on this team. Number one signing, the very first signing for Miami is their scrum half, Thomas Kubeli, an international Argentinian player, 89 uh, tries scored for his career in, in Argentina. He's also played for the Brumbies, the Jaguars, the Western Force in Australia, a lot of veteran, 
a lot of veteranship in Thomas Kubeli, and he's probably going to be the captain of this team. So it's definitely the guy to watch out for and the star in the making in Miami. Big player that I feel that Miami got is Eric Naposki, who I've always been a fan of. Granted, he did go to that other school here in LA, UCLA, uh, as the number one draft pick in the 2021 MLR draft. He was drafted by Dallas. I thought he was phenomenal in Dallas and now moving to Miami to make his name here in Miami. Along with him is teammate Alex Tushi that came over, Shane O'Leary from Toronto, Connor Burns from Utah, Ben Bonasso, a um, big pickup from New York, the now defunct New York Ironworkers, a Cap USA Eagle flanker, and three big players from San Diego that are joining the team. Sean McNulty, a uh, former Irish uh, uh, player, used to play for the LA Guillotini's brother, to uh, McNulty, who is now the team captain of the Irish under uh, Irish Sevens team, who's doing really, really well this season for uh, Rugby Sevens. Dan Pryor, who everybody knows from his signature dreadlocks, who also played for San Diego. And then Matisse Freire, who is an Argentinian USA capped eagle. So um, definitely three veteran players that are going to add a lot to this Miami team. And then some international players that are going to make their MLR debut. Rob Evans, who is a Welsh player, uh, well known for his playing with the Scarlets team in the Premiership Rugby Championship. From 2013 to 2022, 151 appearances, 45 points. Um, 39 caps for the Welsh international team. Kirby Myhill, another Welsh player uh, who played for the Cardiff Blues. 98 appearances for them from 2016 to 2023. A very talented hooker. And then Manuel Ardaro, a Uruguayan player, uh, back row. 23 caps for the Uruguayan national team as well as the Uruguay Sevens. And um, he also played a couple of years with the Penarol Super Rugby Americas team. Uh, and then, of course, the uh, big signing for them in the uh, very first pick in the 2023 MLR jo Collegiate Draft is Ricky Rose, St. Bonaventure lock player. Uh, definitely has a great future ahead of him in Major League Rugby, but that definitely gives uh, Miami kind of a, a cool feel. They have the number one draft pick in 2021 with uh, Eric Naposki and now the 2023 pick in Ricky Rose. So hopefully those two players will flourish in Miami. Again, not much I can really say about Miami because we haven't seen them play. It's going to be a tough sledding for them. But you know what? Maybe not as tough sledding as it will be for this next team, who should be your, if you if you already have a favorite MLR franchise here in the United States, should be your second favorite team, the Charlotte Anthem. Um, now, a little preface about the Charlotte Anthem. A very unique team, and I'm super, super excited by this. The Charlotte Anthem is a team that's going to be backed by USA Rugby and World Rugby. And the sole purpose of the Charlotte Anthem is really to develop young American-born players in the hopes of them getting some experience playing international players because we have a lot of international players now in Major League Rugby, getting a chance to play on the pro level, as well as getting a chance to show off their abilities to then may possibly become capped eagles on the international level. Um, it's a great pathway for young American players to see that they go to college, get drafted, possibly play for Charlotte, and then really get focused on in making it to the Eagles. Now, with that being said, the Charlotte team is definitely going to be super young because the whole purpose of the team was to get a lot of 20s, under 20s players to be on this team. So with that being said, not expecting a whole lot from a very, very young team, which a lot of these players are, it's going to be their very first time playing any kind of competition like this at this level. Um, their head coach is going to be Aloma, Alama Iremia, who is a New Zealander player, former New Zealander player, played for the Hurricanes from 96 to 2000, played for the, the Sunwolves, um, I'm sorry, for the Sun Goliath in Japan, one of the best teams in Japan, from 2001 to 2004. He is a Samoan and New Zealand capped player. He's a former All Black, which at the time that he was playing, there was kind of a, a weird loop around about being able to play for two national unions. So he is one of the players that was able to do it for both Samoa and New Zealand. Uh, not only did he play for the All Blacks during the 95 World Cup, he was also able to play during the Sevens World Cup uh, in 93 for Samoa and then 97 
for New Zealand as well. Uh, he was the head coach of Samoa in 2015, as well as he was a coach in 2009 to 2010 for the Hurricanes. Um, you know, he's definitely going to add quite a bit of experience for these young players. A great leader to have for Charlotte Anthem in their very first year. The Charlotte Anthem is going to be playing in the American Legion Memorial Stadium in Charlotte. Uh, it's a 10,500 seat stadium, which actually makes it the fifth largest stadium currently in Major League Rugby, right behind Choctaw Stadium for Dallas, Snapdragon Stadium for San Diego, um, Dignity Hill Sports Park, which is going to be the new stadium for the LA Rugby Football Club LA, and then, of course, SeatGeek Stadium with Chicago. Um, all those hold over 20,000. Uh, Charlotte will be the fifth largest stadium for uh, an MLR team, which I think that's great uh, for just the sport in itself. Now, I did mention that a lot of the players on Charlotte are going to be young. Doesn't mean that all of them are. They do have a few veteran players and quite a few good veteran players. Uh, first of all, Jake Turnbull, Australian prop, uh, traded from Seattle over to Charlotte, seven-year vet over 50 caps, uh, played for both, played for Houston or Glory, um, also played for Austin before selling in Seattle. Lots of experience, especially in that front row. Your props, your hooker, you need to have experienced players. Um, that is almost a must in rugby. Uh, th that that position in the scrum is so vital. You can't really throw in rookie or young players. You really need to have veteran players, especially if you're playing on a pro level. Clive and Lobster, uh, full fly half, Namibian national. Uh, third most points scored in all time for, Namib for the Namibian national team. Uh, he is the highest sc point scorer actively playing for Namibia. He played in the 2023 Rugby World Cup in uh, France. Played for Utah from 2021 to 2023. Has come over to Charlotte as well. Another great veteran for the Charlotte team. And then a guy I'm kind of upset that uh, <laughs> he didn't come over to L.A. with the rest of the Atlanta squad. Terangritira Waitokia. Talented winger fullback. New Zealander. What a... Uh, had the most tries scored for Atlanta in their last year of playing. Eight tries scored. Played for Atlanta in 2021 to 2023. Again, a guy that I really wish came over to LA. He's going to add a lot of offensive firepower for the Charlotte uh, for the Charlotte Anthem. And then Sean Yacobi, a Scottish player, played for Chicago and New England, a graduate of St. Mary's College, so technically has the ability to be capped for the United States. Now, with that being said, lots of young, talented American players. Another guy that I'm kind of upset that uh, he ended up going to Charlotte, um, Caleb Strum. He was the 2021 draft pick, number seven overall by Austin, Alabama graduate, moved over to Atlanta, was going to play for LA, but then we were uh, during the whole process of making Charlotte, we had two players that were available for Charlotte on each team. Caleb Strum was one of them that got picked up and is now playing for Charlotte. Um, there's a long list of draft, former draft picks that are going to be in Charlotte. Ivan Pula, the third round, 2022 draft pick by New England, a Central Washington graduate. Juan Penn, second round, 2022 draft pick, uh, 16th overall by Chicago. St. Bonaventure uh, graduate going over to Charlotte. Jack Manzo, second round pick in the 2022 draft, 19th overall by Old Glory. He was actually the captain of the under-23 USA team. Uh, he's also played for Cal Berkeley. James River, first round draft pick, 2023, 10th overall by San Diego, an Arizona University graduate, is with Charlotte. Albert O'Shinnessy, second round pick, 2023 draft, 21st overall by the now defunct New York Ironworkers, Central Washington graduate. Shane Barry, first round draft pick, 2022, 12th overall by Seattle, a UCLA graduate. Uh, Kale Hodgson, first round draft pick, 2021, 8th uh, overall by New England. Lindenwood graduates play for Charlotte. And then Junior Gaffa. This one's going to be an interesting one. Second round draft pick, 2023 draft. Uh, 23rd overall by New England. Technically on loan. There's going to be quite a few players that are going to be on loan to Charlotte from all the Major League Rugby teams. Uh, giving them a chance. To, these are going to be, again, young American players. A chance to possibly play and start for a team rather than sit on the bench on the team that they're with, but with the understanding, and this is a little bit different than how American sports work, you're on loan means that you can play for the team, but immediately as the season ends, you're, the, the team that you used to play for, in this case New England, has the right to re-pick you back up and be on the team. You don't get to stay on that team unless 
the original team decides to let you go. So New England has a choice to bring back Junior Gaffa or not. So it actually gives New England a chance to see Junior Gaffa develop as well. Uh, a couple of other players that I really want to point out for Charlotte, Tyron Al-Jabori, the brother to Malam Al-Jabori and e Capped Eagle. He was a first round 2023 draft pick, number 12 overall by San Diego, Lindenwood graduate. Dylan Fortune, a Lindenwood graduate. He was actually a pivotal player in the under 20s USA Eagles team that played in the World Cup Trophy Tournament. Uh, granted that didn't go so well for the under 20 USA team, but Dylan Fortune really impressed me. So he's going to be a player to look out for. And then, God, David Steele, phenomenal player, a Saginaw Valley State University graduate, which is located in Michigan. He was one of the uh, first few crossover players that were a part of the Colorado team that's now the American Raptors playing in the Super Rugby Americas division. Um, the crossover program was basically a way for uh, the USA Eagles to develop players outside of the rugby community uh, that basically made their names in other sports. In this case, David Still was a former football player when he played for Saginaw Valley State University and show them that they have the skills to play rugby. A lot of players have kind of developed from that, especially a lot of them that are on the USA 7s team right now. And David Still was one of them. Uh, Malachi Esdale is another one that, uh, that comes to mind who's been phenomenal um, for the USA 7s team. And David Still really impressed me on the USA 7s circuit. Is now going to play for the uh, Charlotte Anthems as well. Um, so again, what I love about this Charlotte team is it really, if you are a USA rugby fan, this is the team to really watch. And this is why this, this team is going to be your second favorite team. Or if you don't have a franchise, this is the team you should root for. Because these are the players that you want to see develop. And that will become possibly future Eagles players. And they'll be the ones that will be playing in the upcoming Rugby World Cups. Hopefully we'll be starring in the 2032 Rugby World Cup that will be hosted here in the United States. So, you know, it's going to be a lot of fun to watch these players develop get their first years of competition and become possibly future superstars on the global level in the World Cup. So if you're really into that, watching that developmental process, like I was an am still with football, watching players play in college, get into the draft, got onto teams. I mean, look at Patrick Mahomes, you know, the guy's phenomenal now. I mean, and you know, when you start as a rookie year to see that development. Um, Caleb Williams as a USC, as a USC uh, former graduate, seeing Caleb Williams do his thing, possibly become a future superstar now. It's it's watching that development is always awesome. And this is the chance to see it now on the rugby level, seeing these players being drafted, going to the Charlotte Anthem, and then develop to possibly again be future Eagles players. So uh, but again, with that being said, the Charlotte team is definitely going to be a team that will have a lot of growing pains, a lot of struggles, not expecting a lot from them. But it's just going to be a lot of fun to watch them grow and watch them develop and to root for them. Again, I'm probably going to have them as my second favorite team, which I feel bad for Dallas because they were unofficially my second favorite team when they first started. Uh, but we'll see. Maybe second and third, uh, Charlotte and Dallas will fight over it. But uh, we'll see how that goes. So that is part two of the Eastern Conference preview. Uh, again, go see the Conference 1 preview as well to get the full scope. Um, let me know what you think of my thoughts. If you think Nola will kind of develop and do better. Let's see if Miami and Charlotte, how many wins do you think Miami and Charlotte will get in their first season? Again, I'm not expecting too much because Dallas went winless. Uh, Chicago only won three. And, and again, you have both Miami and Charlotte's going to have to play both Chicago, who looks super, super strong this year, and the reigning, defending MLR champions, New England Free Jacks, twice. So that's four games that are almost, almost losses for sure for those two teams. But there might be upsets. We'll see. So let me know in the comments below. Don't forget, Super Brew, we are back, of course, because it's Major League Rugby. We are going to do another Super Brew Rugby for a one pick em. Uh, If you were part of it last year, you know how much fun it can be. All you got to do is you just got to pick your teams that are going to win every week for Major League Rugby. The top player that scores the most points at the end of the regular season wins a MLR t-shirt of your team of choice. Um, to join is absolutely free. All you got to do is download the Super Brew app. 
All the instructions will be in the description of uh, uh, comments below. So it's really easy to join. We already have 10 people coming back from last season. I believe we had 20 players last season. I'm hoping to reach that same, if not exceed that uh, this year. Because it is a lot of fun. And I'm hoping I'll do better. Um, I did really poorly last year. I hope I'll do better this season. So again, uh, join with the Super Brew. Hope you enjoyed the preview. I'm hoping to have the Western Conference preview come up. Um, shortly after this, and as always, thank you very much for watching my video, and I'll see you on the pitch.